Ladies and gentlemen, good morning. On behalf of the European Society for Medical Oncology, it's my pleasure this morning uh, to be the moderator of this exciting session. It's my pleasure to introduce to you Professor Nadia Harbeck from Munich. She will be the commentator. Professor Peter Schmidt from Barts Institute in London, despite he was born in Munich, so he is European. And then Professor Massimo Cristofanilli from the United States, Chicago Northwestern University, but he was born in Italy, like me. I am Giuseppe Curigliano. I work in Milano at the University of Milano and the European Institute of Oncology. We are missing uh, Professor Fabrice André from Paris. He will arrive later, and eventually he will take later the questions from you. We will listen this morning to unprecedented data in triple negative breast cancer. You will be very enthusiastic about this data, and you can ask a lot of questions on this. We will see the overall survival data of CDK46 inhibitors presented by Massimo Cristofanilli. And finally, we will have the presentation of the first precision medicine trial in the field of metastatic breast cancer introduced by Fabrice Andre, the solar one. <coughs> so we can start with the first speaker, Professor Peter Schmidt, the inpatient 130 results from a global, randomized, double-blind, phase three trial of atezolizumab plus napaclitaxel versus placebo plus napaclitaxel in treatment naive, locally advanced, or metastatic triple negative breast cancer. We will present all the data first of any single presentation, and then we will take questions at the end. Thank you very much. Thank you, Giuseppe, and thank you, everyone, for coming that early this, in the morning. I'm trying to find my slides, which is always a good starting point. OK. Here are my disclosures. Triple negative breast cancer, as you know, is an aggressive type of breast cancer. It accounts for about 15 to maximum 20% of bre breast cancer. Patients with metastatic triple negative breast cancer unfortunately still have an inferior outcome compared to other subtypes, with the median overall survival still ranging only in, the, in, in between 15 and 18 months. We currently have no established targeted therapy that has demonstrated an improved survival. Checkpoint inhibition immune therapy is a useful strategy for triple negative breast cancer. We've seen single agent activity with different checkpoint inhibitors. We know that PDL1 can Im inhibit the immune response in cancers, and we know that in triple negative breast cancer, most of the PDL1 expression is in immune cells. So the Impassion 130 trial was the first phase three study in a co with a combination of chemotherapy, in this case now paclitaxel, with up compared to placebo in patients with metastatic triple negative breast cancer. You've seen the trial design. Patients were not pretreated first line therapy for metastatic triple negative breast cancer and were randomized one to one between napaclitaxel and placebo and napaclitaxel and atezolizumab. Stratification factors were taxane use, liver metastasis, and most importantly, PD1 expression, which was defined as at least 1% staining on immune histochemistry. The trial had four co primary endpoints two for progression-free survival in the intention-to-treat analysis and in the PD1 positive subgroup, and then secondly, to in overall survival in the intention-to-treat population and then PD1 positive subgroup. We're presenting here final data for PFS, both for ITT and for the PD1 positive subgroup, and the first interim analysis for OS with, with further, interim, further interim and the final analysis to be expected in the near future. If you look at the primary endpoint of PFS in the ITT population, you see a hazard ratio of 0.8. This is statistically significant. Median progression-free survival increased from 5.5 to 7.2 months, with one-year progression-free survival rates going up from 18% to 24%. If you look at the PD1 positive subgroup, you see an increased benefit with a hazard ratio of 0.62, p-value of less than 0.0001, PFS improving from five months to 7.5 months, and the rate of patients who are progression-free at 12 months going up from 16% to 29%. If you 
If you look at the interim analysis for overall survival, there was no difference in the ITT population according to the predefined criteria with a hazard ratio of 0.84, a p-value of 0.08. If you look at the Kaplan-Meier curves in the PD1 positive subgroup, as you can see, there's a hazard ratio of 0.62. The median overall survival for patients receiving placebo at this time point is 15.5 months and 25, 25 months for patients receiving atezolizumab. The follow-up at this time was only 12.9 months in the survival group, and this was not formally tested due to the statistical design. Looking at the most common adverse events, they were similar between both groups. The most common adverse events were down to common side effects of chemotherapy. There was a small increase in the rate of peripheral neuropathy with atezolizumab compared to placebo, which we believe is down to a longer use of narpaclitaxel in the experimental arm. So our conclusions are that Impassion 130 is the first phase three trial to demonstrate a benefit with first-line immune therapy in triple negative breast cancer. <coughs> Atezolizumab and narpaclitaxel resulted in a statistically significant benefit in PFS, both in the ITT population and the PDL1 positive population, with a hazard ratio of 0.8 in the ITT population, and a clinically, clinically meaningful benefit in the PD1 positive population with a hazard ratio of 0.62. At this first interim analysis, there's a clinically meaningful improvement in overall survival with tesalizumab in the PD1 positive group with a median improvement from, of 15, from 15.5 months to 25 months, hazard ratio of 0.62, but please note there's no formal testing per hierarchical study design. Atezolizumab and Napaclitaxel were well tolerated with a safety profile consistent with each agent. Thank you very much.